Hi, my name is Xander, and this is my story about driving away with a baby blue Impala lowrider. The guy whose car I stole, he was also a member of the Mexican gang that I was involved with, but he was a much older guy. He was probably in his 20s, right? So here's this 20-something-year-old, and he's got myself and my friend. We're both in middle school, and he's now picked us up in his car, and he's going off to some liquor store to buy some beer because we're going to go party. It didn't come to happen, but you can just imagine what may have come to happen. So when he was about to get out of the car to go to the liquor store to buy the alcohol, I said to him, literally, without planning this, off the cuff, I said to him, hey, will you leave the keys in so we can listen to the radio while you're in the store? He didn't think anything of it. He said, sure. So he left the keys in. He went into the store. I scooted on over because we were both in the front seat. He insisted. We were both in the front seat with him, and I was in the middle, so I scooted right over. I started that baby blue Chevy Impala right up, and it had a, the steering wheel was like, it looked like chain link, not like a fence chain link, but like a metal chain that would be attached to a lock. That's what the steering wheel was, like a teeny tiny little thing. It was very, it was common to have those on what they called low riders. So this was a, a low rider baby blue Impala thankfully an automatic. And I just started that puppy up and I drove it and drove it and drove it. And I drove it to that park where I used to hang out. <laughs> and I picked up some of my friends and we drove it and drove it. We drove from Torrance to Long Beach and then it ran out of gas. And I let it coast down the hill as far as it would go because we were on the way down south. And then I think it was power steering. So when the power went out in the car, it was hard to steer. And it was this teeny tiny little steering wheel. And so I was basically you know, pumping the brakes and I was trying to steer it over to the side of the road to park it on a curb. And I didn't do such a fantastic job. I ended up hitting a BMW right in front of a BMW dealership. So of course, I put it in park and we all of us got out of the car and just ran in different directions. For some reason, we knew we all met up like three, four blocks away at some bus stop. I don't think we had money. I think we were hitchhiking back home. Well, the cops came, and the police officer says, I'd like to see some identification, please, or something like that. And I said to the cop, really sarcastically, I'm 13. I don't have identification. I have my library card, which, of course, didn't have my name on it, right? I mean, they didn't have, you know, they didn't have names on them back then, at least not, not my branch. And so he said, uh, well, what's your name? He insisted I tell him my name. I gave him a fake name. I gave him a fake first name, a fake last name. I gave him a fake birth date. I gave him a fake address and phone number because it, there were no computers. It's not like he could look that stuff up. It wasn't like he had a phone that he could just get on the phone right now and verify that that was my home phone number. Nothing. He didn't even drive me. All of my other friends, they all gave their real information. I gave fake information. So I was just a master at this, you know? I mean, at 13, I knew exactly what to say and what not to say. And I remember the police officer said, were you driving that car? And I was like, I'm 13, I can't drive. Well, where's the driver? And I said, I don't know, he, he took off like everybody else. And they said, well, we looked in the glove box and we found some drug paraphernalia. And we were like, we don't do drugs. We're 13, you know, we're just kids. And the cop said, well, if I find out that any of you have anything to do with this, we're gonna come to your homes and talk to your parents. And I'm thinking, yeah, I'm right, not my parents, you're not. And then they left, they left. They didn't even take us in for fluency. We were in the middle of the school day. Right, so they let us stand there to hitchhike back home, which was like, you know, 10 miles away or something like that. Eventually I had made it home, my father never found out. If I had had consequences, you know, it might not have been, it might have ceased to be fun. But I did not get arrested. I did not have to go even to jail to be held until my parents came. I mean, nothing. Except I did get sort of arrested at Disneyland because I went behind the scenes and I was smoking pot with my friend. The first they took us underground into where they have their like jail cells mm -hmm. and called our parents and my dad was I think out of town but my friend's mother came to pick us up and we were told that we were um, I think maybe never allowed back in the park which is just ridiculous you know. But I think that's the only time I ever spent any time in something like a jail which was at Disneyland <laughs> in bear country.